Hey everyone, Daniel Ramsey here with My Outdesk, and today we've got a special guest. His name is Rudy Kasuma, and this is crazy because this guy owns a company called Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. He's in LA, he's got a huge team. Here's what's interesting. He's got nine inside sales people, 45 outside sales people, and over 20 administrative staff members. The coolest part is that he has my Outdesk virtual assistants. And Rudy, thanks for joining us today, man. Daniel, it's a pleasure to be here. And Daniel, your home sold guaranteed realty is the only real estate company that has a consumer's benefit as part of our company's name. The consumer, yeah, actually it's a great thing. When I, when I said it, I was like, oh, your home guaranteed sold. I'm like, okay, that's, that, that's good. If I wanted to sell, I would start with your company. Absolutely. So we are uh, we specialize in helping real estate agents to grow and develop their own real estate seven figure real estate sales team. I love it, man. Okay, so let's go back to when I mean, what's your growth story? Who's Rudy? What have you done? I mean, you haven't always been this successful. So take us back to when you first started in real estate. What'd you do? And how have you gone from, you know, having more than 50 salespeople on your team? Got my license 2007, uh, graduate from school 2001, Daniel. First sales job I did, I sold rich dad, poor dad book door to door. I was selling a book door to door and then I was selling promotional products and my first client was a real estate broker and he asked me to get my license. Got my license in 2007, then I realized there's a broken system in real estate as a whole, as an industry. And when yeah. I say that, I meant, when I first get my license in 2007, my broker asked me, hey, Rudy, uh, first thing, congratulations, your license, you'll do well. And then I asked my brokers, do what? And the first thing he asked me to do is to call call. And, to, and then I was, I like, I was failing miserably. I, I told the broker guy after two, he gave me literally almost like a yellow page, right? It might as well be a yellow page. And then so I go back, I went back to him and says, hey, I don't think I'm cut out for this uh, call calling. Right. And he asked me to do door knocking. Uh -huh. I did that for two, three weeks. And then I, I go back, I went back to the broker and says, the difference between cold calling and door knocking now, the clients was cursing me in person. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, so that's when I was, uh, so back in 2007, I was thinking about, okay, how can we build a team like a normal business where each individual person has a specific role? Hmm. Um, uh, in, in, the, in the transaction. So what I meant by a team, a definition, because right now, Daniel, as you know, the word team has been abused so much. When we talk about a team, I, I, I'm not talking about two, three people get together. That's a crowd. Uh, yeah. a, team, a definition of a true real estate sales team, a true seven figure millionaire real estate sales team is where each individual has a specific role in that transaction. So for example, we have our marketing department just focus on generating leads. We have our administrative staff team, that main job is to input that inquiry into our database, into our CRM system. And then yeah. we have our inside sales team. This is where uh, the admin and the inside sales team, if they do it properly, is to leverage, uh, there's three things we leverage. We leverage technology, we leverage system, and we leverage people. And this is where I think companies like yours, Daniel, I've been partnering, I've been working with my outdesk for I don't know, you have the numbers, but it's like uh, almost more than five years. And this is where we leverage companies like, uh, like yours into, to build this seven figure sales team. So going back to the team, the team by definition is each individual person has a specific role. My marketing department focus on lead generation. My admin team focus on inputting into our database. Our inside sales team focus on calling back those leads, checking the timing and the motivation to see if the buyers and sellers are ready to make a move now within the right. next two to six months. And then our outside sales team, the real estate agents focus only on one thing, surfacing the clients, negotiating deals. Think about it, there is no real estate agents. When I first got my license in 2007, I never knew I'll be a professional whole Holland. Uh, like I, I never knew that I'll be a pest, but at the end of the day, every real estate agent, when they first get the license, they have this idea that they'll be negotiating contract, they'll be putting together deals, they'll be doing real estate, but the moment they get into real life, their broker asks them to become a professional 
door knockers, become a professional co callers. What I'm saying here is that they don't have to be like that, especially with my outdesk, with company like yours. You, you, you add so much value. If we, if we put it together properly into a real sales team system, this is how people like me can grow from a nobody back in 2007 to selling over uh, $10 million in gross commission income uh, in the past, to the past year. But so the inside sales team and then our TC, so going back to our sales team, uh, from the inside sales team, our TC transaction coordinators, then our marketing, our media team. And you can see now as I'm doing this video with you, Daniel, our video, uh, our media team, right? <laughs> our media team is right on. We have over, uh, we have over a thousand videos on YouTube just uh, about our client satisfaction. Uh, about uh, the, the testimonials, the endorsements from each team members. Those are all happening constantly every day. I love it. So that's the team so, system. So is your secret sauce to go from being brand new agent to having a huge team and selling a lot of stuff is putting things into a system, uh, creating a process, and then getting people to help you grow your team? Like, Is that your secret sauce? Yes. So there are three things we leverage system in place i kind of went through quickly about the each department right the second one is we leverage technology when we talk about technology we are talking about the crm we are talking about the uh we are talking about the home selling we are talking about the system to we, we leveraging technology to make it more efficient so for example our CRM now we leverage artificial intelligence to do so in my database I have 45,000 buyers who's looking to buy homes in the area right so if you Daniel you're thinking of selling your home uh, what I'm doing with my system automatically do a search and match analysis to my 45,000 buyers that I have and see out of this 45,000 how many match your home so right. when you hire me to sell your home, you are not hiring me for me to put a for sale sign in front of your house and hoping somebody is going to come. Yep. That's a very passive marketing. That's what happened in real estate industry today. Uh, when, when I talk about leveraging technology, there's, in, there's already enough technology now. When we build this team system, we should be able, we already have, I, we already have a database of over 45,000 buyers. I know what kind of homes they're looking for, what price range they're looking for, which criteria they're looking for. So when you as the homeowners hire me to sell your home, we do a search and match with my database. So that's the second thing. So first, we leverage system. We need to have a system. It's not people dependent, it's system dependent. It's kind of like when you go to McDonald's, right? When you go to McDonald's in Los Angeles, you go to McDonald's in San Francisco, you go to McDonald's in New York, you order hamburgers, it come out the same. Right. Do you know of any other multi-billion dollar restaurant run by high school kids? <laughs> right? That's, yeah, yeah, totally. Because McDonald's is system dependent. So, so in order for us to be successful in real estate today, we gotta, be, we gotta learn how to leverage system, we gotta learn how to leverage technology, and we gotta learn how to leverage people. And when I say leverage people, I'm talking about how to make sure each individual person in your team has a specific role. Right now, as you know, most real estate agents, they try to build a team, but they're, okay. they not only is failed, I think it's even worse than a solo agent because if the definition of a team is me and somebody else here and the two of us doing the same thing, it's even worse when I was a solo agent, right? Because if two people doing the same thing, there's, like, there's a lot of inefficiency. That's not a team. Right. A, a, a definition of a team is just like a normal company. Before I get my license, I used to sell pen door to door. Uh, when I used to sell pen door to door, the company has their own marketing department. They have their own administrative department. They have their own inside sales team. They have their own sales. I was, I was part of the outside sales team when selling pen. And my job is only one, service that clients. Yeah. Right. So that's all we are doing in real estate industry today. And your company, the reason I love my out desk is because you are not just providing the people, Daniel. You guys actually train the people. These people, you know, you, because how can we leverage? And I think most common mistakes people make when they hire people in general, but they blame it on virtual assistant, have nothing to do with virtual assistant because I get feedback from real estate agents saying, oh, virtual assistants, uh, 
they don't know what they're talking about. I'm like, well, and then I asked them, when, the, when you hire somebody, was there a job description? And guess right. what? Most of them, they say no. Right. It's not virtual assistant issue, even if you hire locally, but it, because real estate agents are so busy working in their business, instead of working on their business, they are so busy on the day to day, uh, taking a picture, putting a for sale sign, they never put together a system, a job description. So when they hire somebody, whether it's uh, somebody locally or virtual assistant, and basically the job description is figured it out. Right. Can I do it? So when you hire a virtual assistant from us, we give them a couple of weeks of training and then you put them in your team. How do you get them from knowing nothing about helping Rudy and, and the your home sold guaranteed realty? Uh, they know nothing about your, your company. How do you get them up to speed? Like, and how long does it take? And what are some of the, what are some of the learnings that you've had from doing all this? When I interview your people, uh, Daniel, when I interview people from my out desk, the uh, job applicants, I look at what I like about you guys. You guys already did the DISC analysis. So mm -hmm. I look at that DISC. I look at, uh, so for example, let's use, let's use inside sales team as an example. I'm looking for somebody who's polite on the phone, who sounds friendly on the phone, and yet they're able to close. So there's got to be a D in that individual. So first I use the DISC to screen. Once I use that, now when we do a face-to-face -face, uh, telephone conversation with, your, with the my out desk people, then basically I'm looking for somebody who are coachable, right? I check somebody who are coachable. Uh, I ask basically, what was, I ask them open-ended question, like for example, describe your past, uh, experience, uh, your past work experience. Because yeah. I know you guys already trained the basic as far as uh, I'm not, I don't have to worry about that internet is always cut off, for example. Or I don't need to worry about the chicken is at the background, for example, because you guys have quality control. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, Daniel, but I think your company have some sort of super fish, uh, supervisor or somebody who oversees each, uh, each, one of these, uh, each one of the virtual assistants. So things like that would have been caught at the beginning already. Yeah, we have an account manager. So when somebody hires us, we kind of, um, you know, just partner them up with an account manager and make sure that everything goes smooth. And you're right. We, we check their internet, we check their computer, we make sure they have a quiet place to work. Their English is perfect. I mean, we just kind of do the basics. And if you're listening right now, and if you wanted to hear more or ask any Rudy, any questions, because you know, what's interesting. And the, one of the reasons that I wanted to have you on is because you're in LA and you've built a big team and LA is like, man, it's like, swimming with sharks over there. You guys are some of the most aggressive and um, you know, well-trained and really uh, good agents. So um, having built what you've done, it's, it's pretty special and amazing. Um, but hey, what would, your, um, what would you say if somebody wanted to try hiring a virtual assistant? Like what's the, you know, how do they win if they wanna give this a shot? Before you hire a virtual assistant, first you gotta have a, job description, you gotta know. You gotta start with the end in mind. You cannot just hire anybody, never mind virtual assistant, but it's very common, Daniel. Most real estate agents, they hire an assistant and they don't even know, you know, virtual or even life in person is even worse. So now you have a body who's sitting here just basically do nothing, right? And it's not their assistant's fault, it's your fault. You as the, you as the team leaders, you as the leaders in your organization, you cannot hiring anybody before you begin to hire anybody, uh, virtual or not, doesn't really matter, but you gotta have a job description. So if you wanna, if you wanna read, if you wanna uh, go from becoming a real estate agent to having a real business, then you gotta really think about, look at how much, how much do you worth an hour, right? So look at your commission check, Look at your commission check. You divide it by the amount of hours you work. So now you have your hourly worth. And then you go through your daily activity, putting up a for sale sign, making a copies, designing a flyers, uh, putting up a website, putting up a blogs, uh, posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram. All of these are important, but you gotta ask, is that worth that an hour? Because anything worth than, less than that, then it should be delegated to a staff team members. 
Yep. So that's the beginning of creating a job description, right? So first you got to know what you should be doing. You as the real estate agent, you as the rain makers, you got to, you should be doing stuff that change the outcome. So you, the real estate agent, you have to ask yourself, is this changing the outcome? For example, uh, making up the flyers, does it, is, is it, does it change the outcome? Meaning if you do it, I do it, Daniel do it, Bobby here do it, would the flyers be done anyway? If it is, then, then that's the beginning that we have to have a virtual assistant do it. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, making the flyers, or, but I don't know. So there's no right and wrong. You have to look at yourself and you ask. Every task, every task, you as the real estate agent, you gotta, in, instead of being busy, so starting now, starting today, everything you do, write it down on a piece of paper, right? write it down on a journal, write it down, everything. You are watching this video, you are making a flyers, you are showing homes, you are making a copy of the keys, you are putting a for sale sign, write down everything you do, and you ask yourself, are you changing the outcome? Because if you are changing, if, if whoever doing that change the outcome, then you should be doing it. For example, negotiating a contract. Yep. Whether you do it or I do it, is there a difference? Of course. Then you should do it. Because if, if it's a, if it changed the outcome, then you should be doing stuff that changed the outcome. Negotiating contract, that should be you. Right. But anything else, going to a listing appointment, that should be you. Going to a buyer's appointment, that should be you. Making a copies, that could be anybody. It could be me, it could be Daniel, it could be Bobby, it doesn't really matter. Then, that, then, then now, once you have your day-to-day -day activity, you do that for a week, Daniel. You do that for a week and then you start crossing out stuff. Now you just come up with a job description. Once you have the job description, then you go to my out desk and then they will give a potential candidate that may fit that criteria because there's difference, you know? Uh, somebody, you need somebody who designed the flyers, somebody to make the phone call, somebody to do a customer service call, mm -hmm. or somebody just to type uh, MLS description, for example. Yeah, I love it. If you're listening right now and you want to hire some people just like Rudy has to help him grow his business, just go ahead and put hashtag uh, my out desk on this video and then we'll follow up and just say hello. Um, Rudy, you're amazing. Thanks for going live. We weren't gonna do it, but then <laughs> like, let's just go live and see what happens. Um, and Sven says, hello. Um, what's up Sven? Um, been a long time, man. I hope you're doing good. Uh, Rudy, hey, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for like breaking down how you've won and what you've done that's different. I love your like only do the thing that'll change the outcome for your real estate business. I think that's brilliant. You've been awesome. Um, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Daniel.